Japanese stories, it always starts with the word mukashi mukashi. So I would like you to help me start the story. Now you don't have to put the camera on for this or the sound on for this. You can just do it by yourself. So ready? I will say mukashi and then you can say mukashi back to me. So three, two, one, mukashi, mukashi. Long time ago, there was an old man and he lived up in a mountain by himself. His job was to cut wood and sell it to the people in the village. So one morning he put everything on his back and he set off. Well, he had to watch where he put his feet because it was quite steep and then the rocks and roots were coming out and then he came to this narrow rope bridge. I think there's one in Northern Ireland too, isn't there? Well, it was worse because every step he took, it swayed side to side and oh, the guy, the guy, it's really high. And then after that, he needed to walk even more. So on the way to the village was quite far away. Once he got there, he started his work. Makiwailankane. Anyone want wood? Makiwailankane. But for some reason, he couldn't sell any wood at all this day. So at the end of the day, he needed to carry everything back home. And <laughs> <laughs> By the time he got to the bridge, the old man was exhausted and he needed to take a break. <sighs> and then he looked beside him and there was a mini shrine of dragon god. Dragon gods there, Ryujin Sama we call it, is there around the water, river, lake or ocean. Now this was beside the river. And he said, hmm. Maybe I'll give my word to Ryujin Sama, the dragon god. At least someone's getting something good. So the old man, he walked to the middle of the bridge and he bush, 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 dropped all the wood into the water. Well, now his back was light, but also his heart felt light because he felt like he did something good. And then he was just going to go home and then realize the water started to swirl and it got bigger and bigger and bigger and then came out this beautiful woman with a boy in her hand. And she said, thank you for your gift. The dragon god, Liu Jin Sama, is very pleased and he would like to give you a reward. This is Snotty Boy. He can make your wish come true. But just one thing, you must feed him shrimp paste every day. And with that, the woman went back into the water, leaving the snotty boy behind with his big green snot coming out from him. So the old man, he carried Snotty Boy a bit far away from him to make sure that he wouldn't get that green snot on him and came back home, or rather a shack. It was a small and rundown place. Well, he went in and looked for his zabuton, which is a square mat to sit on, but his was so old and been sat on so many times, it was like this thin. But he found it, he cleaned it, placed it on tatami mat, he put Snoggy Boy on top of it, and then he thought, oh, I don't have any money. Hmm. So he went to Snoggy Boy and said, well, Snoggy Boy, Snoggy Boy, you see, I don't have any money. Can you get me some money? And then the snotty boy went <coughs> three times and me, 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 money appeared. <gasps> the old man grabbed the money and he ran to the village and he got this, that, and this, uh, uh, whatever he wanted. And he had fantastic dinner. Well, 
the next day, the old man went to Snotty Boy and he said, ah, Snotty Boy, Snotty Boy, you see, uh, this house is a bit small and old. Do you think you can get me a nice new house? And Snotty Boy went. Now you can join me with this, making snotty sound, but no real thing coming out, just sounds. And it's three times. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three. <coughs> three times. And the house turned into a gorgeous mansion. The following day. The old man went to Snotty Boy again, and then he said, ah, Snotty Boy, Snotty Boy, you see, this house you got me is really, really nice, but it's a bit too big for me to look after it by myself. Do you think you can get me some servants and maybe a chef? Well, Snotty Boy went, are you ready? <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> three times and the servants and a chef appeared from then on it was snotty boy this snotty boy that and in no time the old man had everything he needed and as he got richer people wanted to become his friend and he was invited to here there everywhere but no matter how far away he was or how busy he was, he needed to come home to feed Snotty Boy. Do you remember what it was? Yes, shrimp paste. He tried to have his servants do the job, but Snotty Boy was not having any of it. It had to be done by the old man. And he came home from far away today again. <sighs> Here you go. I thought, uh, I, I, thinking to himself, oh, only if I don't have to do this. A few days later, the old man went to Snotty Boy and he said, Snotty Boy, Snotty Boy, you see, um, this, what you got here for me is wonderful, but I got everything I need. And I don't need your service anymore. Maybe you can go back to where you came from. Hmm. This naughty boy looked so sad. But he stood up and he walked out the door. Oh, thank goodness for that, thought the old man. And next second. <laughs> The biggest snot sound ever, and everything turned back to the way it was. The old man was sitting in his old hut on top of his old zabaton. Oh, what have I done? The old man ran outside and snotty boy, snotty boy. He looked for Snotty Boy, but Snotty Boy was nowhere to be found. So after all, old man's life, it didn't change that much. Oshima. And that was the story of Snotty Boy. <laughs> so, I hope you're enjoying my stories. I hope you did a good job with Snotty Sound too. <laughs> I'm sure you did. <laughs> Hopefully there was no accident. I, if there was, sorry teachers or carer. <laughs> My next story. Well, I wonder if any of you know what I am wearing, the name of this costume. Like, I will show you a bit more. It's like this and it's got the back. See, this is Japanese national costume called kimono. Now, it is actually very simply made i got one here as well see it's just this is my daughter's just material and what's holding are the strings now i wonder can you guess how many strings i have around me to hold this sheep now do you think it's five do you think it's six 
8, 11, 15. The answer is 8. 8 strings are holding me. So it's quite tight. It's good for your diet. If anybody is looking for diet, <laughs> you can't eat too much because you have to hold it tight. And see this middle part. This is called obi. Now this is a size of obi I'm using for this clothes. But these type thin ones are used for summer casual clothes, for cotton and things. For my next story, this obi, the belt, is going to play the part. So do you remember how the Japanese story starts? It starts with mukashi mukashi. I will say mukashi. Please say mukashi back to me. Ready? Mukashi. Mukashi. Long time ago. Well, there was, can you see, a small temple. And there lived an abbot and a little monk, an apprentice, about 10 years of age, still little. And one day, the little monk was cleaning the yard. It was autumn and the, you know, the leaves started to come down and he was cleaning, cleaning. And then the abbot came. Ah, little monk, little monk, you see. It's a good time to go to the mountain to pick up chestnuts. Why don't you go and do that? Hi, answered the little monk. Well, that's how Japanese good children will answer to their parents or the teachers. So can you say hi? Hi. <laughs> Very good. I'm sure it's so cute. I'm too sad I can't hear you, but I'm sure it was so cute. Now, so the little monk got this huge bamboo basket and put it on his back and he set off to the mountain. And after a long time, he came to the area where there were trees of chestnuts. Oh, the abbot was right. The place is covered in chestnuts. Have you seen chestnuts? They got little spikes outside. So he got this tong, well, rather very long chopsticks. And then he picked it up and put it in the basket, picked it up and put it in the basket, picked it up and put it in the basket. Oh, this little monk worked so hard. And he was continuously looking down to pick up chestnut. When he put his head up, ka, ka, the crow was going back home. It was getting dark. Oh, oh no, I'm quite high up in the mountain. And I don't have any light, and I won't make it down. I can't go home. <laughs> and then the little monk started to cry. And then, after a little while, a woman, a beautiful woman, walked by with a lantern in her hand and said, Little monk, why are you crying? <laughs> I can't go home. Oh, don't worry. Surely you can come to my place and then go home tomorrow. Hmm? Really? <laughs> Arigatou gozaimasu. Thank you. So little monk followed this beautiful woman to her house. It was in the middle of the mountain, a small house with a thatched roof. And then he was taken inside. Oh, she cooked him lovely fish from the river and then pickled vegetables. Oh, and then the rice, white, soft rice. Oh, it was all so tasty. And futon. Oh, softest ever futon. Oh, good night. The little monk went to sleep. Hmm? In the middle of the night, strange sound woke up the little monk. What's that sound? Shh, shh. It seems to be coming from the next room. The light was coming through between the doors. So the little monk tiptoe 
towards the door and then open the sliding door just a little bit and he peeked there and oh! over there was Yamamba, a mountain witch with a shaggy gray hair and then she had a golden goggly eyes big mouth with fan coming out and then she was shh, shh, sharpening a big knife shh, shh. Yeah. Oh, that little monk looked so tasty <laughs> And a little bit more sharper. Shh, shh. Oh, she's gonna eat me, thought little monk. And then next second, ah, you saw me, said the Amamba, the witch. And then she used her magical power. Suddenly, the obi, the belt that was lying about, started to move like a live huge snake. And he came to the little monk and. Psh, 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 wrapped around little monk from head to toe and little monk couldn't move <laughs> but then this little monk he was a very clever little monk and he said i, I need to go to the toilet I, I really need to go to the toilet ah so the yamamba she took him to the toilet and closed the door and then once he was inside he took off that bobby from him and then put it around the pillar inside the toilet and he took out his lucky charm like these well the abbot before he left he said to the little monk take these with you just in case so the little monk he took one out and then he said to the and he placed it actually between the obby and then he said to the Lucky charm. <laughs> Answer instead of me when asked. And then, meanwhile, there was a little window. So he squeezed out. And then he ran for his life. Meanwhile, outside the door, Yamamba was waiting. And then she said, Are you done yet? And then the lucky charm answered, Not yet. And she waited and waited. <sighs> Are you done yet? And Lucky Charm answered, Not yet. Mm, something is not right here. So she went into the toilet and ran. Oh, the little monk ran away. So she started to run after him. And oh, my goodness, can she run fast? She ran and ran. Oh! Your mamba is right behind me. So the little monk he took out the second lucky charm and he said, mm, Big water, big water, come out. And he threw it towards Yamamba. And a huge lake appeared that you cannot see from side to side. And then Yamamba came and she said, ah, I can gulp this up in one go. So now can you all help me to gulp this water up? Ready? One, two, three. <gasps> and water was all gone. So your mamba was after the little monk again. <sighs> She's right behind me. So the little monk took out his last lucky charm and he said, big fire, big fire, come out. And he threw it to your mamba. Uh, <sighs> A huge fire appeared that you cannot see from side to side. And then Yamamba came and she looked at the fire and then she said, I can blow this up in one go. So are you ready to blow out? Ready? We need a big air to blow this out. Three, two, one. And then the fire was gone. But by this time, the little monk reached the temple and he went up and opened the door. <laughs> the monk, the abbot, the abbot, help me, help me, Yamamba, the witch is coming to eat me. Oh, is that so? answered the abbot. Why don't you go and hide then? So the little monk did. Now, 
The abbot he stood up and walked to the kitchen, and there was this portable stove, ceramic stove with a charcoal inside, and there was a net on the top. And he brought it to the front, and he got a topsick and mochi. Mochi is a rice cake. In, once it's made, it's soft, but then we leave it to harden it. And then once hardened one is placed in the fire and on heat, it becomes soft, chewy, and super yum. So he started to cook mochi. And then came Yamamba. Ah, where is that little man? Give him to me. He is mine. Oh, well, if you can impress me with your magic, maybe I will. Huh. What do you want me to do? Well, so can you make yourself small? Oh, that's too difficult, isn't it? Making it small like a bean. Oh, that's not possible, is it? <gasps> no, 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 no. Of course I can do it. Huh. So your mamba. She started to make herself small, 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 small to the tiny, tiny bean. And then the abbot, he picked up mochi, cooked mochi, nice and soft and chewy. He picked up yamamba bean, placed it in mochi, he rolled the mochi, and he went, <gasps> He ate it. So that was the end of Yamamba Witch. And that is the end of the story of the three lucky charms. <laughs> Hope you liked it. Now, let's see. Oh, so next story, the last story I have, is a very traditional Japanese stories. Now I notice some there are some um, older children, so maybe you might know, but similar stories is heard in Irish mythology. So maybe you might know some. We'll see if you can find out. <laughs> so and this story even have a song and it goes like this. Mukashi, Mukashi, Hulashima wa Tasketa Kameni, Tsure Lalete, Ryukucho, Ikimashita. Ready for Mukashi, Mukashi? Mukashi, Mukashi. Long time ago, there was a young man named Urashima Taro. Urashima is family name. Taro is the first name. In Japan, it's the other way around. Family name comes first. Well, this Taro was a young fisherman. So in the morning, he picked up his long rod and placed it on his shoulder. And then he picked up a basket to put fish in. And off he went onto the beach. His boat was on the beach. So he was walking, it was a nice sunny day, like today. And then he noticed some children were gathering up in circle, sitting down, up to something. And he was curious, so he went over and looked into the circle. Good Jim look this way. Uh -huh, maybe put it upside down. The little children were poking and shoving a little turtle. Hurra! Do not bully the small creatures! Ah, the little children scattered away. Well, Taro, he knelt down and picked up this little turtle gently. And then he walked towards the edge of the water and he let it swim away. Don't get caught again.
a few days later. It was another lovely sunny day. Tylo was on his way to his boat and he encountered another turtle. Well, this one was big and I mean enormous. And not only that, it started to speak to Tylo. Thank you for saving my little boy. My master would like to greet you. Please come with me to the underwater world. Underwater world? Oh yes, Taro was curious. So he agreed. He hopped on to the back of the huge turtle and he went into the water. Well, the thing is though, when you go underwater, can you see well? <laughs> you need goggles or something, don't you? But Palo was able to see everything crystal clear. More so, when you go underwater, can you breathe? No. But Taro was able to breathe, no problem. And from the back of the huge turtle, Taro looked up and the surface of the ocean were shining bright like hundreds and thousands of diamonds. It was so beautiful in against the sun. And he looked down and there were bright red and yellow and green forests of coral. And he can see a little fish, orange with a bit of yellow, was it yellow and white and black going in and out, in and out through the forest. What do you call those fish? A clownfish, isn't it? And then over there on the other side, he sees something big, it's red, and then it's got scissors and walking sideways. What do you think that is? <laughs> Crab. And then up there, wow, thousands or more tiny blue shiny fish were swimming together and making a shape of the ball and animals and different shapes. <sighs> The underwater world was beautiful. And then Taro came to the magnificent Ryugu Castle, the Dragon Castle. And at the entrance, a woman was waiting for him. My name is Otohime, Princess Oto. Thank you for saving my little turtle. Please enjoy your stay here as long as you wish. And then a banquet, a party was held for Taro. Who oh, want food, drink, mm, was so delicious. And then do you know a fish called flounder? Well, they are flat fish and live at the bottom of the sea. But they were <laughs> dancing like Irish dancers. <laughs> it was so funny. And then, have you seen squid dancing? Well, swimming first. They swim like this. And then there were many, many of them synchronized swimming. And it was so great. Oh, Taro was having a wonderful time underwater. One day became one week, one week became one month, one month became a year, and before you know it, three years has passed. But one day, this vision, image came to Taro's mind. It was his mother's face. And then he thought of his father and the people in the village, his friends, and once that seed was placed in his head, it grew bigger and bigger and bigger. And then there was no other way, but Taro had to go back home. Now, Princess Otto was so upset because she was fond of Taro and she tried to change his mind, but she couldn't. So she brought 
this decorative box it was black and shiny with the shell decorations and red ribbon tied to the top and she said this is tamate bako if you hold on to this box you can come back to Ryugu castle but no matter what do not open this in human world Taro agreed and he took the box and he jumped on to the back of the enormous turtle and he went back up to the human world. After saying goodbye to the turtle, he walked towards the village. But you know, the buildings looked different and people, people wearing seems different. And Taro did not recognize anybody's face. And then he walked to his house, or rather, where his house used to be, because there was only ruins, grass growing, trees and rocks. An old man with a stick walked by, and Taro asked, "Excuse me, excuse me." Do you know what happened to this house? And the old man said, Well, as far as I can remember, no one lived in it. Puzzled, Taro went to the burial ground. And then after a good search, he found his mother's tombstone and his father's tombstone and Taro's tombstone. There was his own tombstone, but it had a green moss growing, part of the stone was chipped, and it was hard to read his name. Well, in the underwater world, it was only three years, but in human world, 300 years has passed. Distraught. Taro wandered on to the beach. He was so upset. And while he was walking, he forgot the promise he made with Princess Otto because he was just too sad. And he slumped down onto the sand. And then, without thinking too much, he opened up the box. <sighs> A white smoke covered Taro from head to toe. His hair turned gray and shaggy. His face all wrinkly. And he had a very long beard. Taro turned into a very old man. Now some stories say that he turned into ash and got blown away with a sea wind. But some stories say he gained an eternal life and still living in the area where he used to live to this day, longing for his old life and longing for Ryugu Castle and Princess Otto. Oshimai, the end. And that's my story. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>